Minnesota Today. Good morning, good morning. Hello. Thank you so much for tuning in to North Dakota Today. My name is Ashlyn Hill. And I'm Sophia Richards. Happy Wednesday, everybody. We're making the most of our kind of dreary, drizzly weather, I know. huh? It was drizzling when I was driving into work this morning, like the misty yeah. rain. I made the joke, so same thing, but I'm driving in around 3 a.m. and yep. That's it the was, difference. That's a big difference here. Well, it's funny, too, <laughs> because it's already dark, right? So you can't see that well mm -hmm. to begin with. Then the mist is on your windshield, and it's not enough of a rain to, like, clear away. Yes. It just is enough to be dirty. Mm -hmm. And I was like, do I even have windshield wiper fluid? I did, luckily, to, like, mm -hmm. clear it off. But I was like, I can't see. And then I was like, <laughs> oh, it's mist. It's not just dark. It was a whole thing. Anyway, I made it here safely. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're grateful for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so just be mindful of that. Some places are a little foggy today, too. But, mm -hmm. yeah, we're just trying to brighten up our day from the inside out. Yeah, I know. I can't believe it's already Wednesday, though. This week's I know. gone by. Yeah, here we go. And we have so many cute stories. Mm -hmm. Let's kick things off. Yes. All right, so the world's <laughs> rarest giraffe was born at Bright Zoo in Limestone on July 31st. So this is the kicker. The baby girl was born solid brown. Aww. Giraffe experts at the zoo say that b they believe that she is the only solid colored giraffe living anywhere on the planet, which wow. is amazing. Yeah. So the calf already stands six feet tall and is now available to, for the public to see at the zoo if you're interested. How incredible. It reminds me of a horse. Yeah. It like really clearly does. a giraffe, yeah. but just the solid color brown. It looks so interesting. Mm -hmm. I just never thought I'd see such a thing like that. Yeah, so uh, cute. They say the calf is thriving. And this is what's funny now, so, you know, bear with me as I try to announce some of these things. But the zoo is asking for our help as the public to name the baby, and they've narrowed it down to four different names. Kipiki or Kipiki. Okay, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> as I said, bear with me, but they all have a special meaning. So that one means unique. Mm -hmm. Friali or Fireali, meaning unusual or extraordinary. Shakiri, meaning she's the most beautiful, which just sounds like Shakira, and now it all makes sense. Mm -hmm. Shakira, Shakira. Yep. And then Jamea, meaning one of great beauty. So how fun is that? You can uh, make your vote by heading to the zoo's Facebook page and enter the poll for your favorite name. It's open through Labor Day. And then finally, after that, the one with the most votes wins. But how cute, how special, how just one of those things that you don't think you'd ever see. Yeah, definitely. It's a cute one. So uh, keeping on with our animal theme, this story made me laugh out loud. So we've all heard of the excuse, my dog ain't my homework, right? That's just like the most cliche tale as old as time. Uh, what, <laughs> in a digital age, in a new world where we travel <laughs> the world, uh, today's problem is my dog ate my passport, and that really did happen for one couple. Their Italian wedding may now be on hold after their dog chewed up the groom's passport. So here is a look at the evidence. You can see the pages torn up and chewed up. The cover's still intact, the part that you don't need. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so the South Boston couple clearly had a destination wedding. It's happening in Italy. Husband-to-be Donatello Fratoli discovered that their golden retriever, Chicky, chewed up several pages of his passport. He found this out last week. There she is. There's the There's culprit. The culprit. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make sure I included both photos. Um, but essentially, they discovered the passports all chewed up. Mm -hmm. They are scheduled to fly out this Friday. <laughs> can't imagine going through that but further into the Boston News report it said that the couple immediately contacted the state and the Boston Passport Agency mm -hmm. to try to get some special kind of circumstantial help yeah so I guess what the big issue was is that it was the first four pages of that chewed up passport okay so that includes your photo your personal information the barcode that they scan yeah. when you go through TSA to like check in and everything when you open it and scan it mm -hmm. so it was one of those pages that was just completely ripped up and I mean that, that's everything you need to travel internationally I just can't imagine but then I thought well is it better to be stuck here rather than there to come back home yeah I can't decide which kind of passport problem is worse, but okay. So the dog eats this passport, mm -hmm. right? 
I've been seeing so many travel stories lately where people aren't looking up closely their expiration dates of their passports. Oh, so yeah. they're trying to head to Mexico for a tropical vacation and they can't leave because their passport expires too soon. Because a big reminder, even if you have time, my passport literally expires in October, but I can't leave the country anymore because October's too close of an expiration okay, date so to come back. Okay, so the time limit. And that's I a real see. story for yeah. me. Yeah, that's okay. like, that's true life. I've needed to renew my passport for months and yeah. I just haven't done it yet. So I couldn't even use it I to go to Mexico. I think that's something that a lot of people don't think about. Exactly. You know, is the return. Uh -huh. No, that makes a lot of sense. I know, Gosh, isn't that That's a good crazy? reminder for myself too. I should check mine. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, your passport woes. And then, you know, your puppies and your pets kind of chew up shoes and those yeah. types of things, but you don't necessarily think to block, I don't know, yeah. to worry about a passport. I don't know. I just feel so bad for this couple. So hopefully everything works out. Again, they are scheduled to leave on Friday. It was really funny. One of the quotes in the news story, uh, the groom said, I'm not making a plan B. I'm acting as if I am leaving. Yeah. We're going. That's what's happening. So yeah. fingers crossed. Well, you can't be <laughs> mad at that, that cute puppy face. Oh, yeah. You know, he's probably like, oh. You chewed up my. You know you yeah, can't be yeah, mad yeah. at him. No, I'm and sure that's a good was, point because you yeah. just reminded me too. They, the couple, even said like, okay, the the dog's not the issue. We yeah. love our pup. Like yeah. it's not a like a home chewing wrecking dog yeah. by any means. It's just one of those things that obviously makes a great news story. Yeah. And then if it does get pulled off and it all does end well, then what an even better story. True. And how Very memorable true. for your wedding. Yeah, we'll have to keep everyone updated for those. Well, and then, and then I was gonna make the joke like if I was a guest for that wedding, I'm still going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've planned an international vacation. Yeah. My passport's fully intact. Yeah. Like, I guess I'll just head to the vineyard instead. <laughs> there you okay. go. We had a third story. We're kind of rushing along here. Uh, this one was very interesting. I was asking <laughs> Sophia uh, if she was Gen Z. So you're Gen Z. I'm yep. a millennial. It's a divide. It's a war on the couch. Yeah. No, not really. But this story I thought was very interesting. Phone phobias are now getting developed and we can guess in which age range, but now you can seek out help if you're having issues. But listen to this news story where they break down what's going on with the use of our phones. It's becoming a more antiquated form of communication with each passing year. Talking on the phone and research shows the main antagonists are Gen Z's. I don't like it that much. It's not. I'd rather just text. It's so easy to just like text someone quickly or like it's much more private than like having conversation out loud. These two teenagers are good friends who hang out all the time but admit. How often do you guys actually call one another? Never. Never. <laughs> never. Yeah, we don't ever call. So what do you guys do? Text? Well, yeah, we text. Experts insist the shrinking number of voice to voice phone conversations is now leading to worries for teens and young adults. Research out of Australia shows 90% of Gen Z's are anxious about speaking on the phone. And some say an awkward phone call is one of the top three things they'd want to avoid in life. This 23-year-old knows it to be true. I do get a little bit anxious. It's a lot of effort to like pick up the phone and have to talk all the time. With landlines yeah. becoming obsolete and younger generations getting their own cell phones earlier in life, experts say kids aren't learning the proper phone skill. Your teenager may have a harder time. It turns out that talking on the phone is a skill. And for decades, we didn't recognize that because we all did it. Mary Jane Coops was given the nickname the phone lady and has coached more than 15,000 workers on how to communicate properly. Do you think moving forward, it's going to get better or worse? In terms of the anxiety, I do see that increasing. But at the same time, I see business shifting. She says while phone conversations are becoming less prevalent in the workplace, everyone should still know how to speak on the phone. She even suggests how you can practice. Cut out pictures from magazines of a smiling man and a smiling woman and look at that while you're on the phone so that you feel more comfortable with how the other person is receiving your conversation. And as the saying goes, practice makes perfect. John Diaz, CBS 2 News. So talking on the phone is a skill. Yeah. I'm adding it to my resume. <laughs> <laughs> See, I love talking to people on the phone. 
Maybe out of character for my generation, but. That's what's so funny, because I was asking you, I was like, how do you feel about this? Mm -hmm. I've obviously heard you speak on the phone. Yep. <laughs> but a lot of your friends, you said, will not answer their phone. Yes, some of them. You know, sometimes, you know, you really need something, and you're trying to call someone, and they get so weird about talking uh -huh. on the phone. I'm like, I'm here. Can uh -huh. you let me in? Are we going to leave? Or, you know, something <laughs> urgent, and I yes. think they just rather text. But for me, exactly. it's just so much easier to just be like, hey, I'm outside picking you up you yeah. want to go and like, they think those plans it's so we weird yeah. yeah yeah and I'm sure but. a lot of people at home are you know thinking yeah this is pretty relatable whether yeah. it's your kids or somebody in your family or even you it's funny to me because I know adults of all ages who yeah. don't necessarily like talking on the phone it's just the fact now that it's becoming a phobia yes sign of the times everybody <laughs> Well, we are whistling our way through our Wednesday. We have so much coming up on today's show, including a caffeine fix. Sophia's checking in with our first guest right here after the break.